Hello everybody and welcome to race number four of the Snickers Cup Series. We are live from Atlanta Motor Speedway for the Coca-Cola 300. As you see, Noel Stiller is on the pole. It was outside James Silverfox. And we'll give you the rest of the top five. Uh, Catherine Bowman, Joseph Bryant, and Jacob Binzer. Yes, Joseph Bryant is in the double zero this race. Mary Cole was involved in a wreck during practice sessions. And the knee was just, the pain was just too excruciating. Went to the Infield Care Center and is out for, we're not sure how long, maybe even until after the All-Star Race. So, I'm going to be up here in the broadcast booth solo for probably more than half the season as Joseph Bryant is taking over the driver responsibility for the double zero car. Uh, we'll give you a starting lineup in just a minute, but let's get a few drivers' opinions on the race today. Why don't we get... First, the double zero car of Joseph Bryant. You're going to have to bear with us. We've been trying to get communications worked out all day long, and we haven't been able to yet um, to really establish a good connection with him. But uh, just bear with us. Hopefully, we'll be able to get in touch with him and see if we can find out how his Toyota is today. Joseph, Seth Cole up in the NNSCR Studios booth. Have you got a copy, man? Okay, well, we're having a real hard time hearing you. If you could speak up, that would be great. But uh, just wanted to ask you, first of all, uh, you're taking over the new responsibilities. Obviously, you were able to get the race car up well in qualifying, and I believe this is a backup car. What do you think? How is that race car today? Oh, the race car's pretty just, uh, It might be... Fuel mileage is going to be a big thing. Um, don't know about the other guys, but I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. Uh, I just hope to see everybody in victory lane. Okay, and uh, um, yeah, I don't know if everybody was able to hear that. He was saying that fuel mileage is going to come down to that and uh, that he feels he has a good car. How about getting in victory lane? What do you think? It could be uh, pretty, pretty good. Um, I'm not counting on anything until it actually happens. Alright, well, uh, good luck out there today, and it's going to be not, you know, it's going to be kind of lonely up here in the booth, but nice to see you being able to race there out on the racetrack. Oh, no problem, bro. Uh, we'll see you at the end race. Okay, so that's Joseph Bryant. We would have gotten an interview with Mary Cole, however, she is not even here at the racetrack, so we aren't able to talk with her. Uh, let's see if we can get word with an other driver. Um, hold on one second. Let's see if we can establish a connection here. Okay, I believe we've got lined up the five car, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay, we're going to try and talk with Timmy Pacioli, who's starting almost in dead last. And we'll see if we can get a word with him. Timmy, it's Seth Cole up in the NNS series studios. Both of you got a copy. Okay, well, obviously we're able to establish a better connection with the five car. Uh, Timmy, uh, first of all, how's your race car today? You're starting at the back of the pack, but how's the GoDaddy.com Chevrolet? Uh, we were loose in practice, but uh, I think with a few adjustments in the race, um, we'll be able to get up there to the front and contend for this win. All right, you said contending for the win. You think the five can get into victory lane, come from the back to the front? All right, well, good luck today. Hope you're able to clear all the wrecks and get a good finish today. Yep, uh, uh, good luck for us today as well. All right, thanks very much. And uh, I think we're going to be getting close to going under the green flag. So uh, I don't know if we have time. Yeah, we might have time to be able to get Jake Berg. So uh, let's see if we can. We talked with him last week, and he had a pretty good finish. It wasn't his best, the Home Depot Toyota. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Jake, it's S.S. Steve. Uh, at the Steph Co-op in the studio's booth. Have you got a copy? Okay, yes, I do have a copy. 
All right, well, Jake, you didn't have the best of finishes last week. However, you did finish on the lead lap. You're starting in the middle of the field today. What do you think about your race car? All right, well, how about winning today? What do you think? You may be able to come become the first repeat winner of the 2011 Snickers Cup Series season. All right, well, good luck today, Jake, as you're about to go green. Okay, well, uh, I'm not sure how he was able to talk while he was driving, but we went under the green flag nonetheless. It was three wide there a moment ago. Jacob Binzer, Catherine Bowman, and James Silverfox. Noel Stiller, on the other hand, has been able to move out to a pretty nice lead. It's a big battle back here. Man, still three wide. Mike Newman, Joseph Bryant, Wyatt Johnston up there on the high side. Great racing right now early on in this race. You see the battle for second. James Silverfox on the high side. Down low, Catherine Bowman. Behind them, Jake Binzer and Mike Newman going at it for fourth. Oh, someone must have spun. Is anybody off the pace? Oh, I'm getting a report that the 83 and Jake Berg may have hit the wall. Doug Shears and Jake Berg. I don't think we're under the caution. No, we are not. I don't know if Jake Berg was maybe preoccupied talking with us and ended up hitting the wall or what. Caution is out. Caution lights are on. There's Angel D'Souza, John Worry, Chad Skinner. There's Jake Berg yet again. Jake Cole. Oh, D'Souza nails Jake Berg. There's, uh, there's the four car of Philip Stiller, Jordan Hetzer there. Alex Band looks like he's got some damage right behind his brother, Robert. Looks like the 78 and the 37, Eric Neon and Tay Kovac were able to go th get through. Let's go back, look at the replay, see what happened here. Well, here's what happened on lap one. We told you that we got to report the 83 car had hit the wall. Watch Sean Galligan in the two, move the 88 up the racetrack, makes just a little bit of contact with the left front of the 83, which is enough to send him up the racetrack and into the wall. Now, we also told you Jake Berg hit the wall. That is true. If you watch the bottom of your screen, coming into view will be, I believe, the 56 and the 20. Here they are. TJ Morrison and Jake Berg, they get together. Berg slides up the racetrack. Morrishead is able to save his race car. And both Berg and uh, Doug Shears get into the wall. Two Toyotas. Everybody else amazingly able to get past those two slower race cars. Now let's show you what happened further up. I think maybe it started up around Chad Skinner, maybe Michael Harvey. I'm not sure. Okay, here we go. We had quite a few incidents actually here on lap two. The 24 was one, but look here. There's Angel D'Souza up the racetrack, makes contact with Jake Cole. The two of them went up the racetrack. Now watch, I think it's the 14 of Kurt Sardar. Turns Robert Band down the racetrack right there. He catches the right rear quarter panel of Chad Skinner up the racetrack they go. Philip Stiller is involved. John Worry flips over. Eric Neon also got a piece of it. And I believe our points leader got some damage right here. You see the 38 coming into view. That's Alex Ban. Oh, yeah, he got the 36. But then, that's not all. There's John Worry still flipping over, but... There was a wreck further up, which I believe involved his teammate, Timmy Pacioli, right here. They're coming up on the slower car of Philip Stiller. They make contact, and around everybody goes. Philip Stiller makes contact with his teammate, Doug Shears. Pacioli spins. Harvey through the grass. Hetzer got a piece of it right there. So a lot of race cars involved in this.
And uh, let's see, Jake Berg. Let's see how he got involved in this. Oh yeah, Berg's already involved. Let's let's rewind just a little bit here. Oh, looks like Jake Cole may have had something to do with it. Let's see. Looks like maybe Berg made his contact with Jake Cole. Let's see here. Jake Cole. Oh yeah. Jake Cole makes his contact here with the 24 car of John Worry right there. Goes up the racetrack and then I think is going to get T-boned right about here by the oncoming car. Yeah, of Jake Berg. Oh, that's a hard, hard lick. Jake Berg was coming through full speed. And we just talked with him on the in-car radio. Boy, that 36 car is pretty mashed up. Chad Skinner. Wow. Just barely misses the 36. Oh, and Angel D'Souza just nailed Jake Berg as well. Wow. Hard impact for a lot of race cars. Well, a lot of race cars taken out in this one. John Worry, amazingly enough, even though he flipped, his race car is still underway, I believe. Let's look. I think the 24 is still on the racetrack. Um, okay, maybe not. I thought he was. Maybe he's taking it to the garage now. But Jake Cole is also out. Angel D'Souza is also in the garage area. Green flag back in the air. And I gotta say, I really appreciate people volunteering to be in-car radio announcers. I was thinking I'd have a hard time finding people who volunteer. We're, we already have a lineup set up for next week when we head to Talladega. And, uh, or I'm sorry, not Talladega. Darlington, I believe. And um, already at the top of that list is Arnold Columbia, the 31 car. We'll be talking with him. Noel Stiller seems to have the advantage of being the guy who started on the pole because he is doing the exact same thing that Kenny McCreary did last week at Las Vegas where he'd be out front and nobody could pass him. They could catch him, but they couldn't pass him. And Alex Bam, by the way, is at the rear of the field. He did have damage. He came down pit road, so our points leader... In trouble already. Like I said, when you win a race, when you're leading the points, it seems like you have a big old target on your back. In other words, hey, look at this. I'm in front. Now watch me have bad luck. It always seems to be the way that it is. It's been that way ever since we started this series. We've had four, or actually three separate winners. Three separate points leaders by the time we leave each race. And we may have the same thing happen here today. Catherine Bowman right on the back bumper of the three car. But I'll tell you what, that three car is out of the exact same stables that Kenny McCreary's Bass Pro Shop Chevy is. So I wouldn't be surprised if that three car is going to give that 47 all the trouble in the world of trying to be able to pass him. James Silverfox, Mike Newman, they're no strangers to each other. Cousins running in third and fourth. Separate teams, however. The 92 running for the Brad Keselowski, or actually Brian Keselowski family. And the 71 car being raced for TRG Racing. <laughs> 